decided to get my real estate license right after COVID. Um, I was about nine months pregnant. I came from multifamily property management. Yep. So just doing apartment rentals, things of that sort. Um, and I was kind of sick of being an employee and, you know, being taken advantage of. So I said, you know what? I think I'm going to just go ahead and get my real estate license. So two weeks postpartum, brand new baby in my arms, breastfeeding everything. Um, I went ahead and found a real estate school and I reached out to the, the instructor and it was new for him as well. They weren't doing that, you know, pre-COVID. You had to actually go into the class. So I told the instructor, I said, look, I'm two weeks postpartum. I'm still breastfeeding. I'll pay double the fee for my baby to come too. But if she can't come, I'm not coming. So he allowed me to attend the class with the baby and she didn't hardly make any noise. And I had the camera showing up from here and above. So I breastfed her when I needed to. Every now and then they saw her little head pop up when I had to burp her. Um, went and got my license and I'm like, okay, what do I do now? Um, my mother-in-law was not supportive of me obtaining my license. She told me that I was wasting my husband's money and I was wasting my time. So therefore I knew I had to prove her wrong. I didn't have that many people rooting for me. So um, about a month after I received my license, I was posting left and right. I got my real estate license. I'm over here previewing homes, no idea what to do. A military spouse reached out to me and said, I want you to list my home. I acted as confident as I could. So I'm like, of course, I'm going to list your home. I'm going to take real good care of you. I'm over here looking up how to look at how to do a CMA on YouTube. I had no one to call. I had no idea what I was doing, but I went in there confident. And um, I knew that I had to use that listing to leverage more buyers and other listings because I'm like, this This is probably my only shot that I'm going to be able to have. I did not feel comfortable asking anyone else for handouts because I knew everyone was expecting me to fail. And that's how I started. <laughs> Crazy confidence, sweetheart, is what I heard. And community, I'm I'm shocked uh, because knowing you now like I do, that you didn't have a community, you didn't have support. You had to look these things up because mm -hmm. when I think of you, I see a person who so many lean on, so many people know you. And, and that was, again, that was part of my excitement for having you on, uh, plus the fact that like I said, between you, Steve, Richie, you guys have been the most, um, uh, Christine, you guys have been the most consistent, you know, participants each and every week. And mm -hmm. so I'm I'm just so honored and so proud. And, and uh, you know, two or three years into this, again, perception is everything. I mm -hmm. see all your posts and I'm like, man, I, I got to pick up my <laughs> game because my girl is kicking my tail. And I love that. I love it. And mm -hmm. I think that's what this community is about. Uh, I see my buddy, Scott, and and again, Richie and Crystal and um, and Shan and, and, and Vanessa and, and Tom, so many people here. And I think we all want the same thing. We want to see each other succeed at a high level. There's just no animosity, no yeah. jealousy here as Nevada mm -hmm. jumps on. Same thing. My brother mm -hmm. wants the same thing. And I know you know him well. We yes, all do. the same thing, and that's for us all to, uh, you know, achieve and succeed mm -hmm. and serve at a high level. So, thank you for blessing so many. Of so, course. Uh, I, again, I know you didn't you didn't plan on jumping and starting right there, but I think it was good. <laughs> for folks to know at least that that part of your your journey and and your entrance into this. So, yes. um, the floor is yours. So you uh, impart some of that uh, some of that beautiful wisdom, and and let me just say that. Um, uh -huh. Your, your hair game is on point, sweetheart. Oh, I'm, you think so? I barely did it. <laughs> it is on point. And that's Thank coming you. from someone who needs a shave. So it's all good. It's all good. Okay. <laughs> to be honest with you, I wasn't sure what I was going to speak about today. I just said, you know what? I'm just going to let God guide me and whatever comes out of my mouth is what it is. Um. The one thing that I want everybody to take away from this call today is I'm not going to say you know, have a business plan or 411 or whatever KW uh, preaches. The one thing that I want people to take away from this call is just to get into action. That's it. Um, this market is, is an extremely tough market. We all know that it's a shifting market. Um, 
But if you want to win in this market, you have to have an attachment to your goal. You have to become obsessed with it. The difference between you, who you are, and who you want to be is what you do. You have to be so sick and tired of not knowing where your business is coming from, not knowing where your next paycheck is coming from, and just being so sick and tired that you want to change. And change is scary. We all know that. But opportunity is on the other side of fear. And I want you to take 2024 extremely personal. I want you to say that in 2024, this is the year that I'm not holding back. I'm not taking any prisoners and I'm going to fund the life that I want to live. Because why, why else are you in this industry if it's not to make money? Hard work is going to beat talent every single time. I sometimes am guilty of that, of judging people's outsides and portraying it in my own. I'm like, oh, that person had six closes and that person looks like they're doing what they need to do. And sometimes I feel insecure about my lack of knowledge in the industry because I don't have as much experience as most people would. But I have to tell myself, the more I work, the better I do. We all have a rookie of the year in our office, right? And what exactly is a rookie of the year? It's a newbie in the industry that's pretty much outperforming most agents in the office. How is that? And they have the least amount of experience. Why? Because of that hard work and drive that they're constantly putting in. In the shifting market, many agents have dropped out of this industry because with enough failure and rejection, most people are willing to give up on their dreams. And sometimes I'm guilty of that too, but I know that failure is not an option. So I go to bed at night and I tell myself, you know what, I'm going to give myself one more day. And when I feel like giving up, I say, I'm going to give myself one more day and one more day after that. It's just that push to just get yourself to go to sleep, wake up the next day, hustle. And if that fails, guess what? Rewind and do it again, because failure is no other option for me. And I know that a lot of agents are going to say that they don't have any business and they don't know where to start. Well, if you don't have any business, then the first thing that you need to be doing every single day, no matter what, it sounds cliche, but it's true, is lead generating. You need to build your pipeline enough so that way you have enough leads to support your goal. You have to be consistent. Um, statistically, they say that with 201 contacts in your database, that you have a six-figure income. Now, personally, I'm not a big fan of buying leads because I don't want to spend the extra money on it, to be honest with you. And I feel like buying Zillow leads and any other leads have the lowest conversion rate. I know that a lot of agents are going to say, if I just had a ton of leads, I can go ahead and I'll be closing homes left and right. But realistically, I can give somebody 100 leads, but if they're not consistent and they, know, they don't know how to convert those leads, they're going to fail every single time. So it honestly really doesn't matter if you're not willing to put the work into it. I hear a lot of agents too saying that they don't have a spear. I didn't have a spear either. So if you don't have a spear, my advice to you is talk to as many people as possible. Talk to the people at the grocery store. Talk to people at your kid's school, at your local gym, events. I know you made friends with the Uber Eats driver. You might as well talk to him too. The mail lady, go ahead and put on your name tag and go to local businesses and don't even sound salesy. You don't even have to say, do you know anybody that's looking to buy, sell, and invest in real estate? Just go in there and get to know them and build those relationships. Because believe it or not, relationships can take you to places that money can't. And I've heard Emmerich P say a couple of times before that you're only one person from knowing that other person that can change your life. For instance, maybe Ben cannot help me in a certain way or a problem that I'm that I'm needing, but by me going to him and letting him know my issue, maybe he knows somebody that knows somebody that can assist me. One of the things that I like to do with lead generating is open houses. Open houses are my jam. I don't like to cold call. It's not my thing. And honestly, if somebody was to probably pressure me into cold calling, I'm never going to do it. Open houses, you should at least be doing those twice a week. Now, some agents, especially a lot of new agents, I see what they're doing and they'll they'll host the open house, put up a flyer, and then they'll just stand there like a warm body. You don't need to be doing that. The purpose of an open house is to get every single person's name, phone number, and email address, as well as address if you can, so that way you can go ahead and start building your database. Um, that's the purpose of you being there. So one of the other things that I like to do as well is putting out at least 20 directionals in every single direction. If it's on a highway, um, main high traffic area, you need to at least have 20 directionals. Three, four, five is definitely not going to cut it. 
also sending out a, a couple of mailers a few days before the open houses. And let me just correct this really quickly because I know some people are going to ask, if you don't have your own listing, go ahead and reach out to other agents in that area and just ask them if you can go ahead and start advertising their home for them or if you can host the open house for them. I'm pretty sure they'll be more than happy to because a lot of agents don't realistically, they don't like to sit at their own open house. I don't know why I like to because I want to go ahead and at least pick up one listing from an open house and possibly two other buyers. Also, I like to door knock that community as well. So if you're going to do an open house, you need to hit it hard. Again, don't just half it and put out a flyer and think that's going to be enough. Put out those 20 directionals, send out the mailers, door knock. And when I door knock, I don't try to sound salesy. So I don't knock and say, hi, I'm Krista with Keller Williams. Are you looking to sell your house? I'm going to go knock on their door and say, hey, I'm Krista Sweetman with Keller Williams. I'm hosting an open house for your neighbor. You're probably going to notice some high traffic during the hours of one to two on Sunday. And I don't want you to be, to, I don't want you to be alarmed. I just want you to know that I'm actually hosting an open house for your neighbor. Um, so if you want to happen to come by, or if you know somebody that's interested in being your neighbor, I would love to help and I'll give them my card. I want that open house to be so big, meaning putting out flyers, banners, balloons, everything that I need to. So that way the neighbors are so impressed. I want them to know that not only am I selling their house, but I'm also constantly prospecting for new buyers for them or people that they know. I'm also a big fan of handwritten notes. So when somebody comes by your open house, you want to go ahead and try to obtain their address. And I know some people are going to say, well, I don't know how to get their address as well. Well, on my open house book, I typically either write like a fake made up name or another agent's name. Like I've used Shannon's name a couple of times and a couple of other people because I want to go ahead and fill out my guest card. So I'll put their name on there, make up a fake, fake no number, put in that address and email address. Why? Because the next person that comes in, they're going to see that I'm an open house sheet and they're going to follow exactly that. If you just have your open house sheet blank, people are going to fill out what they want to. They're going to just fill out their name, a phone number, and leave everything else completely blank. However, them seeing that pattern of, oh, you know, two or three people already came, fill this out, and they put their address and email address, I need to go ahead and do the same. And they're going to end up doing that. And that's how I'm able to go ahead and send out the handwritten notes to them as well. Also, referrals. Just because you're friends with someone on Facebook or another agent, don't automatically expect that they're going to send you business. Ask for the business from your past clients, from your neighbors, from your friends, from local business owners. It doesn't matter who it is. I think a lot of us just automatically assume that people know since they're realtors, we want the business, but sometimes we forget to just ask for the business. Um, when you're tagged in certain groups, and this is something that I learned the hard way, when you're tagged in certain groups on Facebook, don't just automatically go on and like, for instance, if they're tagging my name, don't just jump on that post and go, oh, thank you so much, everybody. I would love to help. You need to be hungry. You need to be going after that agent, finding their phone number, calling them, texting them. Hey, I saw that you posted saying that you needed a realtor in Savannah, Georgia. What can I do to earn your business? Because by the time that you're wasting the time that you're wasting posting and trying to find your business card to put in that post and thanking everybody, that agent then already spoke to somebody else. Um, I'm also a big fan of the 36 touch plan. Why? Because I want to stay top of mind. 36, I think it's 86% of um, buyers and sellers would say that they would use the same agent again, but they don't even remember who you are. We want to believe that everyone remembers us, but honestly, they're not going to remember. So with the 36, touch, um, the 36 touch plan, I'm a big fan of sending at least uh, 12 newsletters. So once every single month, hosting at least two to four client events. And that doesn't have to be only your money. Partner with a local vendor um, or whoever you need to, to kind of cut that expense a little bit. Also sending out 26 emails and like some item, some value item. I also like to do um, four mailers and pop buys. Even if you just have a candy bar, you know, just, and you just happen to be in your past client's neighborhood and just say, hey, I was thinking about you, um, just stopping by, just wanted to go ahead and hand you, you know, a Reese's cup and a, and a pop or um, a Starbucks coffee and a gift card. I was just thinking about you, even though I knew that I drove 
20, 30 minutes to come and strategically do that. They don't know that. Um, so it was just constantly just being top of mind. One of my clients um, for her home anniversary, I dropped her off some wine. Um, I think it was like a small gift card and a handwritten note. She called me two days later to come to come back and resell that house again. Um, so you just never know. You just constantly have to just be in the pathway of business. Um, love on your past clients because loving on your past clients, honestly, is going to give you a higher return on investment than cold calling or just obtaining a lead that's not even pre-approved. If you go ahead and love on your past clients, they're going to they're gonna at least send you some form of business, whether it's um, them referring you or them knowing a friend who's referring you as well. Um, I had a real estate agent. Well, I know a real estate agent that posted on Facebook and I, and Ben, you should know about this because I went ahead and asked you how you felt about it. She posted on her Facebook. Um, obviously, the real estate market is a little bit crazy. And she said, I have a thousand dollars. What should I do with it? What side hustle should I invest in? And the first thing I'm thinking about is take those thousand dollars and reinvest back into your business. You should at least be farming a community if you have the extra thousand dollars, sending out mailers, but also door knocking along with sending those mailers. Why? Because you want them to see your face. You want to go ahead and have that face association and for them to see just you. If I'm farming a community and I'm sending out mailers and I'm knocking on their door and them seeing me, then guess what? I'm also bringing my kids in the stroller and I'm walking through that community as if I lived there because I want them to constantly recognize my name and face together. Some agents are saying that this market is extremely difficult because of interest rates. And I do admit, interest rates are extremely high. However, the constant need is always there. People are always going to need to buy and sell. Unfortunately, people are constantly getting divorced. Um, there's deaths. People are needing more space because they're growing their family. Some people are needing to downsize. And especially even with military, with the constant changes of PCSing and ETSing as well, the business is always there. In your market, I'm pretty sure that agents are closing, regardless of how hard the business is. So the question is, why aren't you closing? You need to be able to do whatever that you can to get in front of these people and get the business. I would definitely advise people to have a plan and to write down their goal because when you have a goal and when you write it down and you attach an accountability partner to that goal, you're more likely to strive to hit it because now you have somebody holding you accountable. It can be anybody. You can make it your child. You can make it your spouse. You can make it other real estate agents. I have several accountability partners from either a coach all the way until my kids. Like my daughter's almost 16 years old. And she's like, mom, did you make your calls today? Like, um, I'm trying to go on vacation. What, what is it that you're doing? So just having that extra person to keep me accountable there um, it is even more of the reason. If you do not have some type of reason behind why you want to achieve your goal, then you're never going to do it. So for instance, let's just say I'll say I want to hit 30, 30 homes this year. And I, but I'm okay with hitting 28 goals, then I had no attachment to 30. So therefore, if I have no reason to do it, I'm not going to do it. Again, it sounds cliche, but you have to have your big reason why. That thing that's going to wake you up in the morning and say, you know what? I cannot lose. I need to go ahead and I need to call 10 people. I need to get uncomfortable. I need to go door knock. I need to do whatever it whatever it takes. I need to go do open houses or I need to put my face on. I need to put on my bag and go to these local businesses because I need to go ahead and sell more homes and I need to go ahead and be able to obtain and build my pipeline. So that way it's predictable. A lot of real estate agents, what happens is we get into that trend where we're selling, 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 and you know we on this path and we're like, I'm doing it big. And then you forget to get back to the basics and lead generate. So you're here on this roller coaster and you're going up, 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 up. Business is good. Then all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, I'm crashing head first. What happened? No matter what's going on, you don't need to be going on showings realistically. You don't need to be home inspecting. During those times when your business is at its peak, the first thing you need to be doing is going back and still, still shopping for new business constantly. Sorry, guys.
I know I talk a lot sometimes, but if anybody has any questions, or you, anything, please stop me at any time. You drop so much knowledge that um, I I know that uh, the folks here are like, oh, damn, uh, they, they've got to massage everything they've heard. Um, I'm going to ask you this. Um, mm -hmm. You're in the military, <laughs> you're a military spouse, right? Um, and yeah. your spouse is, is that where the bulk of your business comes from or where where is the bulk? So the bulk of my business comes from referrals. So from either past clients, other real estate agents, or maybe um, those that I have helped that cannot buy or sell right now, but I was so personable with them and I took the time to care on them and love on them that they're like, hey, I want you to, I want to trust you with my family member, or I overheard this lady at Walmart, even while my mom was here visiting visiting um she just went home a few weeks ago and when I was at work I had to put her in a couple of Ubers just to get places because she doesn't drive she's you know we're from New York we don't we don't really need to so I gave her a couple of my business cards and she was handing them out left and right she's like I gave them out to three Uber drivers I gave it out to the lady at the mall this person that person and you know she she was my sponsor from then on that's beautiful all right so um get into action Mm -hmm. hope everyone heard that. And I think that especially for 2024, um, because again, we understand that uh, it uh, 2024 will hold its unique challenges just like 2023, right? Yes. And I mm -hmm. think that you need to take it personal. Uh, and I, and I'm yes. real, I'm talking, I know I'm talking to the choir and I'm definitely talking to myself that I need to take it personal, right? There's some things mm -hmm. I know I need to do. Um, you didn't say it, but you inferred it that um, your willings need to equal your wants, right? If mm -hmm. if if your goal, if you say thirty is your goal, but you're okay with twenty seven, then um, you, your goal or your standards probably twenty seven, not thirty, because you're not attached to it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, be mindful of that. One last question. So uh, bold. I'm a I'm 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 referred to as a bold freak because uh, between in person, which I've taken I think 16 times, and virtual, I've taken two or three. Okay. How is that, especially this last quarter? Or so, how has that helped you, or helped your focus, or helped your accountability? How? To be honest, bold just started, so okay. I've only taken one class yet. Okay. Okay. Um, but I knew going into it, we all know. No, I'm not trying to talk bad about anybody, but we all know Keller Williams is expensive and they charge for every little thing. So when taking bold, the first thing that I had to ask myself was if I'm going to go ahead and spend eight hundred dollars, then I need to be all in. I can't have, you know what it, you know, um, who has eight hundred dollars, especially in a shifting market that's that's almost a thousand dollars so i had to make a commitment i thought about it the night before and i'm like if i'm gonna take bold or if i'm gonna go to family reunion and spend a thousand dollars on a ticket then i can't just go there just to bs and lollygag i gotta go there with a purpose and the purpose is i need to make up this money and that's what i did with family reunion last year I was stressed out and that's just me being completely honest. I feel like everybody just wants to go ahead and act like, you know, they're at the top of their game and they have all this money. And a lot of people don't talk about their failures and struggles. Last year, I did not have any business in January. February was family reunion and my husband was putting some pressure on me. He said, I don't know if we can afford it. I'm like, we're putting it on a credit card. So I put family reunion on a credit card and he's like, if you go here and if you go to mega camp, understand you know you're putting us in a bind so I knew I'm like you don't have no faith in me but okay so I knew that going into family reunion I'm like I need to have I need to come back with two referrals to even break even so therefore I knew that I had to at least get four to make up the difference so I had to be strategic about the people that I was going to meet who I was going to hang out with and what I needed to learn in order to take my business to the next level. Like I knew I was having a systems issue and I knew that I was having a leverage issue, but I just didn't know how to connect the two. So I knew that going there, I need to be able to speak to somebody that's going to help be able to help me. Um, so if I'm going to just go to family reunion, just so I can post a bunch of pictures and just so I can say that I went is not going to make any sense. You have to be able to get something out of it. Money, 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 money.